is quality assured films. Welcome back to QA Films Weekly. My name is John. My pronouns are he and him. And I'm Mike, and my pronouns are he and him. Welcome to our eighth episode. Eight weeks ago, we started this uh, experiment. Uh, what week are we in now, Mike? We are in the week of June 29th, 2020, and we are recording this on July 2nd. So happy end of the decade that was June 2020, everyone. Yes, and we have the holidays coming up. Yay! Oh, yeah, celebrating our imperialism. Great. Let's blow some shit up. <laughs> so. Okay. With the 4th of July, are we going to get an answer to the conspiracy theories, or are, are the artillery shells going to actually start going off? That's a good question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so where should we start here? I mean, every week we got some crazy stuff going on here, so I'm guessing... The news? Why, why am I so happy? It's so fucked up. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> I don't know! I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Roll it! What do we got going on in the news, Mike? Well, since it is the beginning of July, uh, yesterday was the first, which meant that rent was due for millions of Americans. And uh, I think we previously discussed that the practice of rent-seeking is bad, actually. And uh, really, we should cancel rent and uh, put a moratorium on evictions. So oh, I just absolutely. wanted to start out with that. Yeah, and I don't know, I don't think this happened since we last checked in that you mentioned on last week's episode, but John Oliver had a great piece about that, about evictions and how they're on the rise in the middle of this crazy uh, virus. So maybe we could throw a link in there. That's a good idea. Uh, the other, if if you watch that Thoughts Line video I talked about, he, he mentioned uh, something called Meslow's Hierarchy of Needs, uh, which is like a visual aid pyramid uh, that shows what uh, a human needs to have, like their basic standard of living. Uh, of course, shelter is on the bottom of that pyramid. So check that out as well. We had some uh, interesting things happen since we last checked in here. One of the things I just, that's circulating online, and I don't know if you're going to touch on this maybe, but um, what happened in Miami at the Miami airport with the Miami Dade police officers that punched a fucking woman, a woman of color, in the fucking face. It's crazy because not only do they then commit that act, but then the, the moment after they knock someone down or the moment after they fucking choke someone out, they, they're on their back and they're fucking handcuffing them like they did something wrong. And it's fucking sick. Yeah, I think, I mean, in general, we've seen the protests are continuing, which I've been so happy to see. Uh, of course, the media hasn't been covering them as much. Of course. Right. But uh, thankfully, the people who are out there on the ground covering the stories uh, as part of the protests are kind of delivering this information through social media. So it's really heartening to see people keep fighting. Um, uh, in, in bad news, uh, we lost a transgender woman, 22 year old Mercy Mack in Dallas, who, who was the 19th reported trans person violently killed this year so far. Which is just fucked. Wow. Uh, and that's so I, sorry. Sorry. I was just saying that's reported. So like, who knows how many other things may have happened where that stuff's just omitted. Yeah. Uh, wear your fucking masks. <laughs> wear your fucking masks. I know. I'm sick of saying it. I'm sick of saying it. I'm sick of seeing it. I'm not. I, I've said this before on our episodes. I'm not a violent person, but I, I see these people and I just want to. <laughs> Yeah, our governor here in PA put a state order out that you must wear your mask when you're in public around, you know, around people. Yep. You have to wear it in stores, but but then they also put out an order that whenever you're in public around people and you can't stay six feet away, like you have to wear your fucking mask. But they can't make you wear it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. I've been in stores where literally people are not wearing it and you... All of us just like stare at them. We're like, "Who the fuck are you?" And yeah, they can't, they can't say anything because what? He's gonna be like, "I smell damn right." There's plenty of videos online of people shaming people that are not wearing a mask, and them just freaking the fuck out. All white people. Amazing how that works. I did make that connection. <laughs> uh, people throwing stuff. People throwing tantrums. 
getting up in people's faces and stuff. It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you were black, oh, the cops would have murdered you for this kind of activity that you're doing right now. Like, I blame individuals for being ignorant, willfully ignorant, but really the people to blame are the ruling class who are enabling that behavior to continue by, by spreading lies. Yep. Yeah, it builds these people up to be like, what are you talking about? Didn't you watch the news? Didn't you see Trump doesn't care whether I wear a mask or not? He's the president. Yeah, Trump, who uh, it turned out actually had been briefed about Russians putting bounties on American troops over a year ago and did nothing about it. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Did you see the thing about Putin? Yeah, he's changing the legislation or whatever so he can be in power till 2036 or some shit like that. I think it's an example of how electoralism is not going to save us. Like, I'm ne- I would never encourage someone to not vote, but right. voting alone, like voting into the corrupt system that was built to, to benefit these people, they're not going to let that stop them. Right. Yep. <laughs> so... That alone is not going to be the solution. And there's a perfect example. I know we talk about videos that are circulating online a lot. And maybe you saw this one, but there's a woman, a white woman, who got out of her van because I guess she was either backing out of a parking space or something. And a, a black family was behind her. And she didn't stop. So the black, fa- like the mother, like just hits the van for a second. Like not hits it, but goes like, yo, what the fuck? She comes out fucking gun. Like, just stay right there. I would have been terrified if I were the person on the other end of that gun. But this woman's like, just look at you. And she keeps going. And it's great. Woman gets in the car, drives away. I, I believe they arrested her. But again, they, they let her go. They confiscated the gun, but they let her go. Right. Of course. Yeah. Right. So interesting. An interesting how they can not murder a white person branching a gun. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, I saw I saw two other videos this week. One uh, of a black couple that got pulled over for a, a traffic stop, and the cop reaches into the guy's car to pop the door open, and the guy's like, "What the fuck?" And the the his uh, partner is filming, mm-hmm. and he's like, "No, fuck this! Like, I'm not getting out." And the the two cops pull their guns out on him, and he fucking drives away before they can shoot. Yo. And I bet you he got in huge fucking trouble, even though I would have done the same thing, because you're talking about your life. Yeah. In that moment, his life could have been over, but he's like, fuck it, I'm yeah. the hell out of here, and whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, I'm sure and they, come- did, they did get a lawyer and are in court, I think. I don't know what the outcome is, but it's like, oh my god. And then, then of course, the two the fucking white couple that came out to defend their palatial estate from protesters with a fucking assault rifle and a pistol. Oh my god, no, I did not you see that. that. No. Ugh, ridiculous. The privilege is, like, (laughs) appalling. So anyway, wear your fucking mask. Uh, Police and prison abolition now. I did see uh, LA County. The council voted to uh, cut hiring of the police department, the lowest budget and the lowest law enforcement we've ever seen since 2008. That's not going into effect until next summer, though, but that is, they're pretty much saying, like, we're not going to have more than, I think it was, like, under 10,000 police, which even that, like, imagine 10,000 fucking police. You got uh, New York City, I think, cut the budget of the police as well by some amount, and you got the fucking president fuckface flipping shit about that. I'm pretty sure I read that that the uh, their budget is $6 billion, and they cut $1 billion. Wow. Okay. I mean, great that $1 billion is now free to be used elsewhere, but fucking $6 billion? Yeah, so I, I don't really ever want to hear again... How are we going to pay for it? Right. (laughs) You print the fucking money. (laughs) What do you mean? How are we going to pay for it? Anyway, that's all I have for news stuff this week. Do you have anything else? Uh, As far as real stuff goes, not really. Um, There was a couple entertainment stuff that's going on we could quickly touch on. Yeah, let's get into it. Entertainment news. We don't have a graphic for that, but if we did, it would be like, (laughs) things that don't suck. Um couple things going on number one boom jason momoa mr aquaman himself have you heard the news he's been cast to to voice frosty the snowman happy birthday in a live action uh adaptation of that classical one that i just did where yeah i know everyone's making that face on what the fuck (laughs) is that why you were singing frosty the snowman earlier i was off camera god before we started yeah yeah so he's gonna be in it it's gonna be a mix between cgi and of course live action so 
I'm sure there'll be a police officer in there that's helping Frosty cross. The <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I know people are flipping out about it. I think it's funny. It know. sounds terrible. <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Hey kids, let's cross the road. <laughs> let's get married by this pastor, or whatever the fuck his name. Is. Parson Brown. Mm-hmm. So that that's interesting. Beavis and Butthead, which I am a fucking huge fan of. When I was a kid, the original series, they came back for a little bit. Uh, it was just announced that Mike Judge is overseeing two seasons of the show. It's coming back to MTV. And it's going to put them in like scenarios where they're going to kind of have to deal with the way the world is now, which I'm very much looking forward to. You brought up that MTV is kind of reinvesting in animation, which was the case. They did a lot of groundbreaking things with... Uh, like liquid television and stuff back when we were kids. Yeah. And that's where we had like the Max and Aeon Flux and Beavis and Butthead and the list goes on. Uh, Daria. Daria, yeah. And uh, another one that got announced this week was Lord Miller coming back to reboot Clone High, which is very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it does also does not hold up anymore. So I'm looking forward to how they reapproach the subject matter now that we're talking about uh you know killing all our heroes and and you know tearing down all the statues and you know trying to look at people not through their mythologized versions but as a flawed uh human creatures who did fucked up things uh <laughs> so I, I, part of me wishes we could just leave the old series as a cult thing and not bring it back from the dead but uh right i guess we'll see how they pull that off uh since i'll probably never get to talk about it again uh <laughs> i guess i didn't describe the premise which is helpfully outlined in the in the theme song of the show which is that in the 80s uh genetic material of his famous historical figures was cloned and given to foster families and then the once the clones hit high school, that's when we are seeing the show. That all these, this clone high high school filled with clones of historical figures mm -hmm. as teenagers. Those quotes of that show are still in my brain to this day. Uh, some of those being when they they <laughs> they get Genghis Khan to go buy beer for them because he looks the oldest. Because <laughs> and and. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't have an ID, so they just make him like repeat over and over again that he's 21. Uh, and so whenever, whenever someone, set, you know, whenever someone's telling their ages or whatever, I'm always like, that my mind goes back to that scene. And then there's there's a there's a uh, one of my favorite cutaway gags of all time, which is Gandhi being like, oh, "I had one of my kidneys removed." And then it does a it does a cutaway to inside his body with the two kidneys there, and one of them's you know just the dotted cartoon lines like he's been like it's been cut out, <laughs> and the other kidney is there, and the voice it's the voice of Michael J. Fox in in one second of cameo for the whole series, and he just goes I miss him. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Uh, and then, of course, there was the episode where Marilyn Manson s does a musical about the food pyramid, which they blatantly ripped off for Family Guy years later. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. There's a, there's a lot of moments that stick out to me in that show that I'm sure do not hold up anymore. It, it's it's interesting too that like that show is such a cult hit when it, it only had one season. Yeah, it's only like 13 episodes or something. Yeah. They all hang out at the Grassy Knoll Diner. <laughs> and then uh, frequently, there's you know, the basically the main character is teenage Abe Lincoln, played by uh, Will Forte, yeah. and uh, there's like every shot of him in the diner. There's like that picture from you know the 1800s illustration of Lincoln getting his brains blown out in the in the fucking theater. Yeah. Uh oh god. The other part of that show that always stuck with me was the the soundtrack that the time the show came out was when I was a teenager in high school and it just so happens that that period of history was also when emo was really big and so 
I have this this uh, not not visceral. I don't know. I, I have this deep uh, connection to like emo indie bands of the early two thousands. Yeah. That uh, that is the soundtrack of that show, and through the years I've come to realize that like people who are not growing up at that same same time definitely do not have the same connection. So uh I'll be interested to see what the soundtrack of that show is like too. So two MTV shows to look forward to in the future. Can't wait. I guess it makes sense that people would be investing into animation. I ha- I hadn't thought of it before this moment. But uh I guess if if all of your fucking live action productions are completely shut down, right. it would make sense to invest in animation where you're just paying somebody to, you know, you're you're paying a team of animators that can be socially distanced from each other. Yeah, that make makes sense. Go. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, um, I know the Matrix. I read the Matrix Four started reshooting again, which at, you know I'm kind of like split on that because I'm like, why are you doing that? The virus, but at the same time, I'm like, make the Matrix Four happen. I watched, or and I didn't watch. I saw on Instagram uh, Jeff Darrow, who was the storyboard artist for the original Matrix, that brought him back for Matrix Four. So he was talking about like, you know, I can't really say anything, but I am working on storyboards. So I thought that was cool. That's awesome. I'm, I'm uh, author of, or uh, sorry, not author, uh, uh, artist on a very influential comic in my. Oh, in my time, which is Hard Boiled here, Ooh. written by Frank Miller, illustrated by Jeff Darrow. Lift that uh, up a little bit. What's that? It's kind of hard to see the artwork. We can see the names oh. a little higher up. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, wow. Insanely detailed yeah. work, I guess. Right, this is... Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Um, let me find some, uh, (laughs) also, also the artist, you may remember, uh, Rusty the Boy Robot, same artist. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. Um. (laughs) Oh, oh my. (laughs) It's like super, like unbelievably detailed artwork. This was a big influence to me growing up. Wow. That's amazing. What's that called? Yeah. Hard boiled. Hard boiled. I hope this guy's not like a piece of shit now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hopefully not. Have they ever made that into a movie or, or a TV show? No, now? no. Oh, nice. not, not that I know of anyway. What else we got going on in the uh, world of entertainment? <laughs> well, speaking of comics, we found out that Warren Ellis, who's a writer of many comics, was uh, Creep this this past week. Found that out. So, uh, no thanks to that guy anymore. Uh, we also found out about fucking Crystalia, oh, who yeah. was one of our favorite comics for a long time. And uh, he was going after, allegedly underage kids yep while he was on tour and uh i guess i guess he was on that show you i watched that show and i and yeah and he plays that role and you're like this is cool it's chris alia and then you hear that after and you're like oh my god what that's like when we found out about louis ck and we were like he's saying it in his stand-up yeah we were just ignoring it yep Um, exactly exactly good point uh, and uh, Ray Fisher, who's the actor who plays Cyborg in the Justice League movie, uh, he came out this week and talked about how uh, Joss Whedon was a big creep and unprofessional and gross and uh, treated everyone really terribly on the set of that movie of Justice League uh, after he took over. Uh, and then a lot of stories about Joss Whedon started coming out and... Uh, yeah, fuck Joss Whedon. <laughs> it's crazy. All these people with money and power, like, it's like the dark side. Is it that easy to just fucking shift over to it? Like, come on. 
I love Firefly. Now, I, when I, if I watch it, I'm like, this motherfucker, ruining shit. Yeah. Well, that one guy, one character on that, like, sucks too. Uh, oh yeah. Adam Baldwin. Who was in <laughs> so Chuck? Like, and I loved him in Chuck too. And then yeah. yeah. I find out he's a fucking. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to get down about it and be like, all these things that I like suck because that's our natural reaction is like, God damn it. Like, fuck, you know, but the upside too is that people are feeling, you know, people are being brave enough to come forward with their stories and we're getting the opportunity to cut these creeps out and get them the fuck out. Yeah. There are so many stories entertainment media out there by underrepresented voices that we can read and watch that it's like we're not we're not losing anything by getting rid of these creeps we're we're it's a good thing is what i'm saying get get these motherfuckers out of here yeah uh like it's long past time and and like the reason why they've stuck around for so long is because all these people in power enable them Right, exactly. So it is refreshing to see people not being afraid to come forward. I mean, I can't even imagine being in their shoes. You have a story like that, and you want to. Yeah, I, I don't blame anyone for not, be, just because of, of those in power retaliate against them. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is incredibly brave of them to share their story. Um, I'm just, I'm glad that. It seems like we're starting to be in a time where people are ready to believe these people, and and uh, you know it's 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 not like it's not really like these fucking creeps are gonna face any kind of consequences, but like the least that at the very least we can fucking shun them and not give them any more, you know, give them our respect and. Yep. Uh, that's like the the least consequences that they can face. So I'm like happy to cut these people out. That's awesome. Yeah. There's that brief moment where you're like, come on, everything else sucks in the world. Why, why, why are you taking this away from me? But it's the fault of that person. So fuck you, Joss Whedon. Yeah. There was a follow-up to that because, of course, he took over directing Justice League from Zack Snyder. And mm -hmm. so it was like, you know, the, the, then the next story that to come out was be, was to be like, well, let's also not put Zack Snyder on a pedestal and then kind of listing off a bunch of problematic stuff about Zack Snyder. So, shot and chaser, I guess. You know, read that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was also uh, some more stuff this week. So there's going to be this movie coming out on Netflix called Enola Holmes, which is about uh, Mycroft and Sherlock's younger sister. Who's played by uh, what's her name? Bobby Millie, Millie, Bobby, Millie Brown. Bobby Brown. Uh, he, yes, and uh, I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. And uh, Henry Cavill's in it. I I'm assuming he's playing Sherlock, but I'm not I'm not sure who, which one he's playing. Oh, that'd be perfect. But yeah. uh, apparently, Arthur Conan Doyle, the the author of creator of Sherlock Holmes, his estate is suing Netflix because even though Sherlock Holmes is in the public domain, the version of Sherlock Holmes that's their, their argument is that the version of Sherlock Holmes that's in the public domain does not have emotions or respect women which is the version of Sherlock Holmes that will be featured in this movie. And so they're arguing that by having a Sherlock Holmes depiction that emotes and respects women, they're violating copyright law. Which is another example of <laughs> how copyright law is fucked. Like, what? Like, it, yeah. We keep hearing crazy shit happening in this year, and, and it just feels like it's all made up and... Granted, this isn't as dire, but it's still like what, what? Yeah, I mean, it's an it's like another example of of the corruption 
and the the far reaching tentacles of capitalism. Uh, you know, we talked a couple a few weeks ago about uh, uh, was it here? It may have been somewhere else, but you know, basically we're saying like Disney, <laughs> you know, the the giant uh. It, that has a giant monopoly on intellectual property got the copyright laws changed so that they could keep the copyrights on all these characters who would be well out of who who would be well in the public domain by now right and so here's another example of capitalist fuckers fucking with the laws to to uh make out you know with a profit and make a buck like all like Mickey, Spider Man, like all these fucking characters like would be in the public domain by now, if not for Disney shelling out to get their legislation passed. That's crazy. So yeah. It all it all it all ties back to the same fucking answer, is my point. She is for capitalism. <laughs> I know that sucks, man. Imagine how many awesome fucking iterations of of all these characters we could be seeing from different minds if if it was just not being sued left and right by these. Exactly, fuckers. exactly. Uh, in some good news, YouTube. Uh, it was a hell of a week for YouTube because, along with Twitch from last week, they also were dealing with fallout from people bravely coming forward and sharing their sexual harassment and abuse stories of big YouTube creators. And so YouTube had to decide what to do with these people because they've previously done nothing. Uh, and so right after that, they uh, also, I guess, finally felt the pressure after years and years of all this damage being done of having all these far right, white supremacist Nazi fucking channels mm -hmm. on their service. So some of the biggest white supremacist Nazi channels have been taken down. Thank God. Finally. Good. Uh, you know, after the, after how many bodies are in the wake of it, you know, what are your internal policies that allow this shit to keep continue? You know, I know, I, I accidentally use a Queen song, and it's like, don't post your video. This guy talks about how, let's wipe out everyone that's not white, and he, <laughs> yeah. he's at the top of the algorithm. Like, <laughs> I watched a new anime. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, let's move on to what we watched. If we watched anything since last week, what, yeah, what, what was it? Uh, so I watched the adaptation of Demon Slayer, which is really big in Japan. Apparently, uh, it's like one of the fastest selling debut manga ever. I think it ended this year. Like the manga ended its run this year. But the anime is only like 26 episodes so far, something like that. Early 20s. Uh, and they're coming out with a movie soon. But it's like animes, like early chapters are being adapted now. So. I'm looking forward to more of that. I'm I'm excited when I did the research that it's not a series that has 500 fucking volumes or something like that, you know? So it's like a story that was had a beginning, middle and end and it's over and done with. Yeah. Uh but it has it's it's really good looking. I really like the character designs. It takes place in G what I guess in the Meiji period or something like that it has to deal with uh kind of samurai warriors who uh fight demons on the download demons demons come out at night and they're they go through this really intense training to be able to go fight them it gives me like the best inuyasha vibes oh like all the best things that you like about inuyasha like this show leans into that and uh, I really enjoyed it. I like just breezed through all those episodes. It has some of the aesthetics of the show. So each each character kind of has like uh, m much like JoJo, the the power, the supernatural powers of the human characters are based on uh, ludicrous uh, breathing techniques <laughs> and. Uh, each character has their own specialty 
And each of those powers is represented in a really unique, like, woodblock, you know, ancient Japanese artwork style. Hmm. Uh, blending CG and 2D animation really seamlessly. And it's, it's, it's very unique. I haven't seen that deployed in the way that the show does. Uh, so, so think about, like, th that famous painting of the wave. So that style of artwork in, uh, um, like, blending CG and 2D animation together with, like, crazy samurai demon battles. It's, it's really good. Uh, <laughs> you should check it out. <laughs> demon Slayer. Yeah, Demon Slayer. Did you watch anything this last week? Um, I did. I actually watched a Netflix show. It's got two seasons. I think the second season just came out within the last like month or so. It's called The Politician, which even the name alone, you would think, why? Nobody wants to fucking talk. We're living in this. But no, it was actually very reminiscent of that movie that you talked about um, with Matthew Broderick and Reese Witherspoon. Um, oh, election? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like a high school <laughs> election. Yeah, this was created by uh, Ryan Murphy, Brad Volchick, and um, Ian Brennan. I know that the first two I mentioned, they're the ones that are behind like Nip Tuck, Glee, which I never really watched Glee, and of course the American Horror Stories, which are fucking insane. This one's um kind of like, it, it's a Netflix original, and it's literally about this kid who's trying to become the class president in his high school. And it's hilarious. I mean, there's twists and turns. At the end of every episode, there's something going on that makes you go, whoa, and then you want to watch the next one. But it's very quick. There's only 15 episodes over the two seasons. So I highly recommend it. In fact, I just read that it, uh, it won, or not won, it was nominated uh, for a Golden Globe for Best TV Show, Comedy or Musical, last year. So it's so good. And Bette Midler joins the cast in season two. And even, I, I'm not sure of her name, but it's the mother from uh, Who's the Boss? Angela. <laughs> it's her. It's, it's the mom. <laughs> It's a fantastic show. Check it out on Netflix, The Politician. But that's all I've been watching. I have a new mic. Look at my new mic. Oh, yeah. Hey. And a new mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Yeti Nano. Look at that. Wow. Yes. That's a big Nano. You should see the big, the bigger one. That's not the size of the mic, John. Okay. <laughs> QA Films Housekeeping. What's new? We finally released our uh, Invisible Man review, which fucking amazing film. I mean, uh, spoiler alert, amazing film, but watch it. It's great. Um, we both have some amazing points on there. I keep using the word amazing, but I can't help it because it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that review. I think it's one of the best analyses, critical analyses that we've done of a movie. I think we, I think we, you know, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that came out. That's our 86th episode. 80. Six. Wow. We're closely approaching the 100 mark, and we'll have to do something special for that. I don't know what yet, but we'll see. <laughs> and I'm currently working on also a couple more that we had previously recorded. And I think there's three more coming out. We, we'll keep those a secret until you see them. Uh, but, you know, those will be coming out over the next week or so. Is, well, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, that's all for this week, I think. Okay, cool. All right, well, then we can move into the outro here. So please subscribe. Uh, as John said, we're going to have some more episodes coming out for 2020 movies over the next couple weeks. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and then you will be notified when those episodes come out. Yes. And, of course, leave a comment because we always like to hear what you think about our review or what you think in general. And whether or not you watch the film based on what we suggested or, or didn't suggest. So we look forward to that. That's right. And send us an email with that same info. <laughs> we really want to hear what you've watched and what you thought about what you watched based on our recommendations. You can do that at qualityassuredfilms at gmail.com. Wow. The future. <laughs> Where else can people find us, John? Oh, my God. Everywhere. We're on Facebook, facebook.com uh, forward slash quality assured films. We're on there. And, and of course, our uh, hilarious Instagram account, QA <laughs> underscore films. Uh, check that out. Also, you know, follow if you'd like. And we'll uh, keep you posted on when we have new episodes and, and some other things that are going on in the QA world. Continue to donate 
to Black Lives Matter. Um, check out the links in our description. Kept a running list of anti-racist resources and places to donate individuals, families, you know, people on the ground that can use your support. If you can't donate, share the links when you see them come through your timeline. Um, keep educating yourself and take action above all. And at the opening of the episode, we talked about the mask wearing and the fact that we're still in this horrible wave and people like to say it's the beginning of the second no we're it's the same wave so come on motherfuckers i'm not gonna say it again because <laughs> i'm losing my mind yes wear your mask uh all signs point to this being like another 18 months at least until we get a vaccine so we're in this for the long haul folks something i'm not looking forward to is tv shows being produced about people wearing masks during the pandemic please don't do that <laughs> oh god that, that'll be a topic for next week i want to talk to you next week and this is a little bit of a teaser if you will but i want to talk about how some of the film that's coming out now not necessarily related to the pandemic but related to like what happened in 2016 with the election and the world we're in now there's movies coming out about it and i feel like it's just too soon we'll talk more about oh it. yeah i'm curious to see your thoughts on that but uh, that'll be next week so Got it. Uh, in the meantime, if you are protesting, please be careful. Please stay safe. Protect your data. Protect your identity. And protect the identity of those around you. There's some links in the description. Uh, check those out in the resources section about how to do that. And of course, our non-essential workers and our essential workers, healthcare providers, healthcare personnel, volunteers, thank you so much. I, I got off the phone with my sister uh, the other day, and she's a nurse in Virginia. COVID nurse, the whole side of her face is completely broken out just because of wearing that mask all day long. And, you know, things aren't really slowing down. Granted, more testing is being done and more cases are happening, but things are not really slowing down. So uh, thank you to all of you. You deserve to be paid accordingly. And uh, we appreciate everything you're doing in these times. Yes, thank you. Well, I believe that is a weekly episode, Mr. Mike. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm John. And I'm Mike. <laughs> And we are Quality Assured Films. Films. See you next week. See you next week. Have a great 4th of July. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> ref reflect on being a colonizer nation. Yes. Bye. <laughs>